Get your coffee and join me today on GHC Coffee Break. I'm very excited about my guest, Andy Wheelis, who is the Director of um, Student Services at Georgia Highlands Coffee. Get your coffee. We'll be right back. If you're looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit the shelterpetproject.org. Welcome to GHC Coffee Break. Um, welcome to my living room. <laughs> uh, I actually wish my living room was this neat. <laughs> but, but Angie, I'm so glad to have you back on our show. Um, I know you were on it not too long ago. But um, I know you've had some really exciting experiences uh, recently um, as a counselor. Um, you and, unfortunately, um, your husband, Chris, cannot join us today. But um, I'd like for you to tell, just tell us a little bit about what you did, um, the trip that you took to Germany, I believe it was. Yes, it was and um, I'm really, I, I'm, I don't, I shouldn't say envious, but maybe I am. <laughs> so anyway, you're going to do a lot of talking. I'm going to do a lot of listening. Okay. Well, thank you for having me, Susan. It's always so good to be with you in your living room. This is nice and comfortable. <laughs> and it's good to see you too, Megan. You. Glad you're here today. <laughs> well, um. Thanks for letting me share about this trip. This was a, a trip of a lifetime. This is something that my husband and I just wanted to do for so long and, and, and it finally came about. We were so grateful to be able to do this. Well, um, I'm a counselor at Georgia Highlands mm -hmm. and my husband is also a counselor at Shorter University. Um, he's also a professor and he does a lot of different things in different places. For uh, and he worked here for a while because he, he, and, he and I worked together. Um, yes. He used to come to my class and do a lot of uh, talks um, for the counseling side, but also so a trip that he made, another mm -hmm. trip, well, and we may even mention it a little bit, okay. um, to the Middle East. Yes, so, yes, to Saudi Arabia. Yes, for that Saudi trip. Arabia. I, was, I didn't want to say it because I said yeah. I'd say it wrong. <laughs> Yeah, so he, he would be with us today, and, and thank you for the invitation, but he's teaching a class, actually, at Richmond Graduate University. So he's teaching other um, counselors in training who awesome. want to be a marriage and family therapist. So he is teaching that class oh there at Richmond. Yes, just great. It's just living a dream. This yes. is better than we deserve. We're really grateful. But our trip, uh, we went to Germany a couple months ago. I think it was last month, maybe. It feels like a lifetime ago. Um, but it was caring for those who care. For others and in this particular case it was for our military personnel so our military families um, live all over you know their own military bases in the United States and all over Europe um, this particular folks that we went to work with and to counsel and just to encourage come alongside and encourage are part of the military community youth ministries they oh. work with our our chaplains on a military bases in Europe specifically these were um, youth ministers who were part of uh, the UK bases on Italy and bases in Germany and so once a year they all gather together and uh, battlefield ministries here in Rome actually have gone out multiple times to do various things for them um, marriage retreats retreats for encouragement but this year they wanted something a little bit different they wanted a team of counselors to come out and just check in with their uh, their personnel check in with their youth ministers and their families um, and just okay. check and see how they're doing so I went with a team of three others so Chris and I my husband Chris and I and two others from Battlefield Ministries um, counselors we went all together we flew into Munich and from Munich, we rented a, a, a bus and drove down. Chris drove. I'm glad he drove on the Autobahn oh, down to um, south of Munich. Are, what side of the road are they on? It's uh, the, uh, the side we drive on. Okay. So it's not, I'm not going to do that then. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. And but Chris it goes fast. It goes really fast. So stay in the right lane if you're not used to driving so quickly. But we drove down to this village. Absolutely beautiful location. Just a, a great conference center. Uh, the view from outside, you could see the, the mountains, the Alps. 
Alps with snow-capped oh. Alps. It was just absolutely stunning. And it was a perfect location for all of these, these teams to come into, just for rest and relaxation and just being together. It was like a giant family reunion for them because they train together and they go oh, out okay. to their military bases. And once a year they come back together for encouragement, for support, for some training. And so we were just um, honored to be a part of that and come alongside as, as counselors to check in with them and encourage, um, come alongside. So what exactly did y'all, I mean, what kind of things did you do? I know, I, I know you may not can give very, all specific details, of course, yeah. but um, first of all, tell us a little bit about Battle. Battlefield. Battlefield in Rome. Battlefield Ministries, Ministries. in Rome. What is uh -huh. that? They are located actually right behind Swift and Finch on Broad Street. And they do, they have counseling, they do uh, marriage, individual counseling, group counseling, CE workshop events. Um, here in in in, uh, in Rome, but they also do multiple things um, internationally. They quite often will have a team that will gather together for Battlefield and go to different locations to encourage either those who are working overseas, those who may be missionaries, those who are caring for those um, who are on on the field in different locations. Um, so they're they're very very um, international. Yeah, I wish I would uh, we would have thought to have one of them here yes. as well because. Is it something that just anybody can get involved in? Right, or do yeah. you have to be a military? No, that, that, they do many, many things. Military was just one of the many things that they're a part of. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. if anybody in the community was interested in knowing more about the, right. the, the Battlefield Ministries, they, they could go and actually talk to them. They could mm -hmm. talk to them, make an appointment for either counseling for themselves or if they know of a team that may be overseas that might need a check-in, or the briefing or debriefing during a trip, or, or if a, a disaster happened in an area and they want a team of counselors to go, or a team just to do a retreat uh, for debriefing retreat, they, they are able to do that. Okay, yeah. that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. They're very active with Windshape Ministries, they're very active with um, uh, just multiple uh, um, missionary organizations worldwide. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and well, that that's something that I did not. No, I may try to have them as a guest on because yeah. it sounds really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, have them as a guest as well because yeah. I think there's a lot of things in our areas still that people don't are not aware of. Right. And so now we've got one more new one. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that part. Absolutely. Um, so getting back to, I, I'm sorry, okay. we digressed okay. a little bit, but I think it's important. Um, but getting back to to your trip. Um, so the people that you work were with were either counselors, they were the already the, they're the helpers. They so y'all were the help. You were helpers helping the helpers. Right, right. Okay. They were all uh, professional youth ministers, and so they were okay. professional youth ministers on military bases, and so they took care of our military teenagers. And okay. I, I have a personal heart for military families. And so when, when military families move around from base to base, when they're deployed, dad's deployed, the whole family moves, um, there's a lot of change in the teenager's life. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, huge change in the teenager's life. So when they go to different military bases, they, um, if there's a club beyond there, and this military, the, the groups that I work with, put these together. It's called Club Beyond. Oh. And it's a youth ministry activity, lots of music and, and things, trips that they do together. And each military base would have one of these. So when military families move around, the teens know, okay, I'm gonna look for the Club Beyond because those are gonna be my people to make it through and to do the, um, so does, connect together. Does all of military bases have this or? Uh, most of them do, most of okay. them do, yeah. So if there's any military families who are living overseas, have their teenagers check into Club Beyond um, and connect with the Club Beyond group. Because we, um, just very recently, uh, my, my niece mm -hmm. um, married um, her high school sweetheart. Mm -hmm. um, she, he is in the, um, Air Force. Okay. And they were just deployed to um, somewhere outside of England, and I can't think of the name of it now. But okay. anyway, so she's she's a new military wife. Okay. She's the first time away from her her family. I mean, okay. you know, they they face they social media. There, that is a positive thing yes. about it. Oh, yes. um, FaceTime when you're in another country or Skyping or whatever. Yeah. But um, so she's able to connect. But that's. You know, that's not the same. Oh, right. So, you know, she's trying to find connections. Um, she's yeah. not a teenager anymore. Well, she is. 
<laughs> she's only 18. She was our baby. Oh, well, she might be a helper in the club beyond. She could be a, a, a Yeah, volunteer. that's what I was wondering yeah. about is that, you know, for, for military, for, like you said, for people who are having to be shifted around, mm -hmm. I can only imagine how difficult that is. Um, I've been in the same state all my I, I think when I was one years old, my mom and dad moved to Texas for a year. <laughs> Too young to remember it. But I, I've lived, you know, within 50 miles of where I was born, basically. Mm. So, or 50, you know, 60 miles. So, I can only imagine how difficult it is to, to have to, to move around. Have you always lived in your own area? Well, kind of. I've lived in the same county, but we've moved like seven times, I think. So, it's been different schools each time. Okay, so you can, you can kind of um, understand what mm -hmm. that, um, what that would be like. Yep. Yeah, so moving around different schools. Mm -hmm. So when you move in, go into a new school, you've got to make new friends. you got to, okay, who are mm -hmm. my people? Who are like me? Who am I going to hang out with? Yes, and, and even here you have to adjust to a different environment. Like each school is still a different environment. Oh, it's a different So culture. I can't even imagine going to a different base in a different country or something like that and having to meet people from there. It's just, yeah. Yeah. So, so this club. So, <laughs> what you did basically, or your group, right. went in and um, provided the people that were helping the young people mm -hmm. with that assistance, because I'm sure they get burnt out and, mm -hmm. and concerned. Um, like you said, uh, we've talked in the past uh, past shows, um, the youth, the mm -hmm. adolescents, mm -hmm. um, the vulnerabilities that they have. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, th these youth workers. They're just like you and me. You know, there are people who love taking care of or working with young people. They're in there creating uh, excitement, energetic activities, teaching them scripture and songs and worship and leading out to the young people. But also when they leave that, they have their own life. You know, they have their husband and wife, maybe. They have children to care for, but they're living in a different culture. You know, they're mm -hmm. all Americans, but they're living in either Italy or they're living in Germany or they're living in the UK. And so those, those nuances of living in a separate culture kind of can may wear on you a bit mm -hmm. as times uh, when things are difficult or there's, there's threats of bombings in the area or threats mm. of kidnapping. That plays a, a role in feeling safe, you know, feeling mm -hmm. secure. And just like any person living overseas, and these just happen to be youth ministers, professional youth ministers working at military bases, but anybody living overseas um, may experience those type of, of difficulties, of anxiety, of things that might be coming their way. Yeah, yeah. I could only, um, and, and for the helpers to help, I mean, I can understand where their, 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 their um, self-care needs to be is really critical because right. they're dealing with these kids I'm sure that they have hor horrific stories at times, mm -hmm. and again, depending on right. where they are located, yeah. but um, how they're coping with the stress. So they're getting bombarded with the kids, yeah. you know. So I can only imagine if they don't have that support right. um, system. So this, is this something that they're trying to do annually for the group? They or? do it annually. annually. Every year, they always gather together. And um, this is the first time that I know of that they they wanted a group of counselors to come alongside and encourage. Okay. And, and, but previous it was a retreat where you have folks from Battlefield will come and create a full-on retreat of um, just awesome things, of course, encouragement that goes along with that as well. So, um, yeah, th this Club Beyond, you can Google it. They have a great um, website that shows what they do. There's a video clip of some young military teenagers talking about what it means to be part of Club Beyond and finding Club Beyond at the different military bases that they go to um, for encouragement. There were a lot of statistics that were run too. Of course, the military is data driven in their decision making, so of course they have to have all the data pulled, but they pulled many data from um, the parents of the mm -hmm. teenagers and from the teenagers themselves of, of what they thought, what, what was a help, um, how did this help them, what are some things that they learned and, and, and got from um, from this, and it's all on their website, the Military okay. um, Community Youth Ministries and Club Beyond, that people can take a look at. It's really fascinating, and yeah. I'm so glad that um, that this is a part of our military families um, who are in the military bases overseas as well as in the states, that our teenagers, when they, uh, from our military families, move around, they have the same uh, consistency of, of awesome people who want to come alongside of them and encourage them 
as young people uh, yeah, to do the next thing. November, um, I know Veterans Day is in November, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm not getting my dates mixed up. I believe it's November. Um, so, you know, this is really important. And when we come back, I'd like to hear a little bit about, you said you're very connected and, and have a passion for the veterans. I would like to know a little bit more about that, as I'm sure our audience would too. Get your coffee, and we'll be right back with GHC Coffee Break. My, my college offers classes that meet my educational and career goals. With opportunities outside the classroom. Where the faculty know me by name. My college can prepare me for my career. I can earn an associate's degree and transfer credits toward my bachelor's. My college is a state college within the University System of Georgia. My college is affordable. It's close to home. My college has online opportunities. It's where excellence begins. We are. We are. We are GHC, Georgia Highlands College. <laughs> Welcome back to GHC Coffee Break. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I too have a very strong heart for veterans. Um, I, I told you, my, uh, I guess it's nephew-in-law, my, my niece's um, husband, and uh, my cousin was in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and I have a really good friend that was in Vietnam that really suffers from a lot of PTSD. Okay. Um, he's had Unfortunately, the, the situation he's been in, alcoholism, um, Vietnam was really rough mm -hmm. on our veterans. I mean, I'm not saying any, any war is not rough, don't misunderstand me, yeah. but um, for him, some of the things that, uh, and he wouldn't even tell me for a long, long time, because mm -hmm. um, I would say, I love you, I love you, and he said, you can't love me. He said, mm -hmm. you don't know what I've done, and I said, but I know who you are now, and, and, and for the veterans, you know, for him anyway, it was like, yes, but, and I finally, he finally shared that he had had to, a, a kid came into camp with bombs mm. strapped to him, right. and it was, he had to shoot him or the whole camp would have been blown up. Yeah. And the, the, the impact that that to this day still has on him. Right. Um, so I have a very, I no, I'm not a veteran's, mother or a veteran's sister or, or, you know, but I still have a very strong connection mm -hmm. to veterans and empathize with what they have to go through, especially if they're in, in a war or combat type situation. I'll, of course, I'll never forget, um, I think his name was Chris, the one that, um, the sniper. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, that he, when he came back here, he was trying to help yeah. And and this veteran just he turned on him and yeah. you know it it so I know it's and and we have a lot of high suicide rates in the veteran population right. too. Yeah. Um, I just finished uh, QPR question persuade refer yes. um, instructor training, and um, there's actually one for specific I want to take it for mm -hmm. veterans. Okay. So um, I know I would like to know a little bit about you know you said you were very connected to the veterans. What what is your connection and concern? Well, I just have to tell you, I'm a proud Navy mom. Oh, so okay. There you go. There you go. Enough no, said. No, no, Show's okay. over. <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. My son, I am so proud of him. Um, he's in uh, the Navy, and right now I think he's underway. We're not sure. I haven't heard from him in a, him in a while, but he's on the USS. That would be so hard. Our SSS Newport News. Yeah, so, he's so you a, can tell that. Okay. Yes, I can tell that. So he's a Navy nuke, and so he's in the submarine, and okay. we were able to visit with him on this, after his first deployment and actually walk through the submarine and see everything on there. Absolutely fascinating. And it's a lot more crowded than it looks oh, like in a TV goodness. show. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes. You have to you know, flush up against the wall as someone walks past you, and there's signs all on the sub that you can't make any noise, like you can't click a fork to a plate or drop the toilet seat or close the cabinet. No noise, because noise will give you away underwater. Right. Mm -hmm. And my son said, you, there's, you know, you don't know, sun, you don't see the sun because you're under the ocean, right. on the bottom of the sea. So you, everything is by watch, you know, I, by watch, I know when I can wake and when I sleep and when it's time to do the next thing and when I'm on and when I'm, um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have great respect yeah. for have you our military personnel. No, yeah. no. It's a funny thing. Okay. But at the same time, the, the noise thing is okay. what, why, why. Okay. Watch down Periscope. Okay. It's um, crane, the guy that played Frazier oh, okay. um, from um, 
oh, what was that TV show? Anyway, yeah. Pay Frazier. Okay. Um, anyway, he's the, the main character, but okay. they're in a submarine. Okay. And yeah. so it might be I interesting to, to watch. Yeah. And the sound part, you'll, you'll, you'll crack up. I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> you'll crack up. I still laugh even now thinking yeah. about it. Uh-huh. But, um, so that, that's your connection. That's my okay. connection. Plus, I'm, I'm working on my dissertation right now. I'm working on my doctorate. Oh, okay. I'll be finishing soon. And my uh, whole emphasis is on our military family, serving oh. our veterans in higher education. And so I'm doing a program evaluation on our Veteran Affairs program at Georgia Highlands College. Wonderful. Looking forward to begin the process. I'll be getting IRB approval soon to be able to jump in and start talking with many of our veterans that we serve at Georgia Highlands. And, awesome. and ways that we have served them and what are some other things we can do to serve well. Do yeah. you have any connections in, with the veterans? Um, my uncle was in the Army. But he um, he's retired now, so I don't have any connections now. But yeah, he but he's moved around. He he lived in Germany for most of my life, so mm-hmm. oh, okay. He's, so you really didn't get to mm-hmm. have that connection with him, right? And, and that's the thing with military families. Mm-hmm. Sometimes like that, you don't ever. And, and I can only because there's times that I know my cousin was in the army, and I've got one in the um, navy. Mm-hmm. Um, that there's times when they're silent. You don't know where they are. Mm-hmm. You're not supposed, like when they got married mm-hmm. and I, I was gonna put something on Facebook and my sister said, no, um, don't tell where they're going. Right. Right. Um, I was able to put their picture up, their, you know, some of their wedding pictures mm-hmm. and stuff, but it was, you know, don't, you know, don't tell where they're going. Yeah. Um, even in their area, there's certain places that as military, being in the military, um, they can't go into, mm-hmm. even though, I guess even in plain clothes, they're not supposed to go in certain areas, right. Um, right. which was like, wow, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. And I know a lot of people, uh, I believe it was um, Charlene, one of our, uh, somebody that works at Georgia Highlands, mm-hmm. says that, you know, they don't advertise that they are military family right. because sometimes they are, are targets. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's un- uh, yeah that that happens and but we we have just the best uh, military personnel in the world as part oh, of our you know United States um, armed forces are just absolutely amazing and so mm-hmm. I'm just uh, proud to be a part of the research part of of, of adding to the research po- um, pool of information of ways that we can help and serve our military personnel especially in higher education. So mm-hmm. with your doctorate mm-hmm. um, and working specifically with veterans, what is your end goal? <laughs> that, I, I don't like that question. I ask that question to other people all the time, but I don't really like that question. I know. Because I'm living the dream. I feel like I'm really living the dream. I love what I do. I love working at Georgia Highlands as the director of student support, uh, making sure that all students are cared for, but I have just a tender heart for our military personnel and their family. I really do. And being able to go to Germany and just do what that small piece of what we did of counseling those who care for our military mm-hmm. family, that was an honor. That was really an honor oh, yeah. there as well. So I, I love what we do. I've, I've been trained with the Department of Defense, um, Center for Deployment Psychology on oh, okay. different modalities to helping our military personnel. Um, prolonged exposure therapy and um, um, not CBT but CPT, cognitive processing therapy. I like which are processing yeah, I do therapy. too. Which are two modalities that the VA approves for caring for our military personnel. So, um, whatever it takes to do whatever I can, <laughs> whenever I can, to help our military families, I'm all in. So, looking at there, there's really to me there's kind of two sides. There's when you're in the military. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are you have a family member close family member in the military but then there's also the care after the deploy after they come home right um because and, and i don't like i said i don't have anybody that's had to be right in the middle of the thick of things right currently mm-hmm. um but at the same time um i know when i've seen the results of some of even some of our students coming back that yeah. uh, the ptsd sudden noises mm-hmm. um just different things can really tense them up. So right. the aftercare to me is real critical. Right, absolutely. And we have to remember, not every veteran has post-traumatic stress right. disorder. But it's really important to remember. Um, it's also important to remember the statistics of those who do come out who are having thoughts of suicide. It's, it's quite common. Um, who are experiencing combat stress reaction. 
transitioning into family life again. Right. And that's a big deal. It's bigger than people realize. Um, you know, when, when the partner has been out on the, on the field, whether it's combat theater or uh, wherever they were, they come back into a system, the one who held the fort down has to kind of shift around, okay, wait a minute, who's in charge now? Okay, right. okay, who, you know, who, who can take the reins now? I had it going so well, and now you're stepping in, okay, we've got to refigure our family systems. So um, just transitioning mm -hmm. into, into civilian after military culture is a big transition. Add in college culture on top of that, that's a whole right. other transition piece as well. So something to consider as we oh, care for our, our veterans. Yeah, yeah and, and um, again, I know we do at Georgia Highlands a, a good bit. Mm -hmm. um, Amy Wise is, is a wonderful resource she is. She um, is. for our veterans, mm -hmm. and she has done, I know she's done marvelous work, and I've, I attended a couple of workshops that she had um, sponsored. Um, yeah. Got your six. Got your six. Um, yeah. I, which to me was yeah absolutely great and I think it's Green Zone Green Zone mm -hmm. um, was the other one that I went through and to me those two really really did those trainings really helped me be more um, I think I was already compassionate but more understanding more of the situation right um, what that really means to, to come back and right. to re it's re socialization really yeah yeah it's, it's understanding the world of the warrior and its implications in higher education, mm -hmm. basically, is what you went through, especially for the Got Your Six and right. the Green Zone as well. Yeah. Um, so that I those, love Scott. yeah, so that those who hear that or, or have that multicultural awareness piece of the world of a warrior of our veteran, um, you can um, make have decisions a bit easier concerning what the, the situations are in the higher ed setting that they're going through. Yeah. Do you um, have any friends or do you know of any veterans on the campus that you've run into? Um, well, was it last semester? Yeah. We had them in our class and mm -hmm. that worked on the projects with us and things like that. That was that I know of. The main one that I actually got close to was her. But Yeah, and she, she was in a, a vehicle that got blown up with an I. IED. Mm -hmm. um, so she she really has, and she's a marvelous person, but mm -hmm. she's very open with what yes. what she shared. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it was, I think it really helped the class understand a little bit, especially from our human service perspective. Oh, yeah. yeah, most Good. definitely. Yeah, and she's a human service um, student, oh, getting ready to graduate actually. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the things that they go through and to, to be aware of them and as, as a, in the community, uh, there is a lot of people who have been in the military that are at risk and that there's still a lot of not people not understanding that there are some real serious mental health things that they need to need help with. Mm -hmm. So Angie, I really appreciate that you are doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about this dissertation. I didn't realize that that's what you're doing. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I would like to be involved in any way I can. Uh, go get your coffee and we'll be right back with GHC Coffee Break. If you're looking for a new pet that your family will cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. That's where you'll discover healthy, loyal, and loving animals, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, visit theshelterpetproject.org. Welcome back to GHC Coffee Break. Um, I just want to say kind of to end up, if you know of a veteran, um, please help them help themselves, get self-care. Um, be kind, refer them. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really big on referrals because we don't always know what to do. Right. Um, find out your resources. Angie, is there anything? We've got about 30 seconds. Anything you well, want to I say? Well, always, I always give the, uh, the hot, hotline number, 1-800-273-TALK. And if a veteran presses one after that, they will go straight to a vet. So vet to a vet, peer to peer is really effective for help, help and care. Perfect, thank mm -hmm. you. And say that number one more time. 1-800-273-TALK, T-A-L-K. And if they press one, it'll take them straight to a veteran. Thank you, Angie. Thank you for listening to GHC Coffee Break. Until next time, y'all have a good day.